Towards the end of every year, the world's top dictionaries put out their lists of the new words that have joined the lexicon or those that have achieved fresh prominence or in some cases attracted a new meaning. This week, the influential Oxford dictionaries have declared post-truth the word of 2016. And to explain what it means, I was joined from Melbourne by crossword composer and wordsmith David Astle. David Astle, my word man, what does post-truth mean? <laughs> well, post-truth is more gut feeling. It's more that squishy preference for what you hope the truth is. A little bit like truthiness that Stephen Colbert coined in 2005. So we're moving away from statistics and objective truths to more the hearts and the minds of, uh, of the population. And where did this word come from? It was coined by a, a Serbian-American playwright uh, called Steve Tesic. And that was in about uh, 1995 or something around there in the nation. But uh, it's taken quite a while for it to catch on, but it certainly has spiked big time ever since. I know this is a bit of a boring, pedantic question, but I just feel compelled to ask it. Go on. You, you know you want to. <laughs> I, I absolutely do. <laughs> um, post-truth is hyphenated. How come yeah. you see words like post-mortem and post-haste and sometimes they're hyphenated and sometimes they're not? And if something's hyphenated, is it then actually one word? When uh, compounds are born, they often are born with a little bit of a uh, umbilical cord, if you like. That's the hyphen. But uh, when one T meets another T, and I'm thinking like hat trick or part time, usually that hyphen is there to stay. But with other compounds like workplace, the hyphen drops out like a little milk tooth. And who, who decides that? <laughs> Well, the population decides. The, uh, with more usage, then uh, workplace becomes a compound. But uh, looking at work drinks, I mean, that's a tradition at Christmas time, but that remains two words because we're reluctant to, uh, to couple that up. So what were some of the other words that this year that made an impact on the people at the Oxford Dictionaries? Well, uh, Oxford Dictionaries have put forward throwing shade, uh, which is an interesting term. It comes from uh, the 1990s again. It's a Latino gay uh, phrase that was very popular in the sort of drag queen dance club disco culture. And throwing shade is... Um, you see, if I said to you, don't wear those earrings again, Lee, <laughs> then that's called a direct insult <laughs> or a read. But if I said to you, girl, wherever you got those earrings, think a little longer and harder... <laughs> Then I'm being shadier with my comments, so that's more of a shady or throwing shade remark. Well, you really don't want to get invited back on this show again, <laughs> do you? <laughs> well, in fact, I love this show because there's a hooger about this show, and hooger is the other word that's in Oxford Dictionary shortlist, as well as the Collins shortlist, and it's a Danish word, H Y double G E, hooger, and it means a cosiness or a comfort. It's the opposite of scary. So if you're feeling safe, you're feeling ensconced, then you have got a whole lot of hygge going on. See, I don't reckon the politicians think this show's got hygge. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, hygge is the word that I have the most problem with. I don't mind post-truth because I think it does mark a sinister development in politics. But hygge, that really is about essentially being Danish. And I think it is quite a, uh, a pinch if we're suddenly trying to claim it as our own. You mentioned the Collins Dictionary people also had picked their words of the year. What were some of the other ones that they had? Well, aside from Brexit, which is like a total der nomination, there were things like sharenting. Uh, that's where you want to share Junior's first tooth, the first vomit, the first step, the first arch uh, raising of the eyebrows. That's called sharenting. Um, what's another one? They also had a word like a, um, a Brexiteer, which is that offshoot of Brexit. And then you've got uh, Brigret and all those other ones. that are, yeah, Again, Brexit has been a very fertile coinage. A word that I've noticed people using a lot recently, but it isn't on any of the lists, is huge, um, Y-U-G-E, meaning huge. Where has that come from? Well, I like to think it comes from uh, rugby league commentary because there's a lot of huge going on. And, and furniture salesman, uh, the big man, Daryl Brampton. But you know where it does come from? It actually comes from uh, New York and Philadelphia in particular. And both Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are um, culprits of the huge... And you could say today has been quite humid and therefore, I mean, poor humour. And it's where an H meets a long U. And where that happens, the corruption is normally the H sound drops off for the U um, sound that remains in the H and just becomes 
even more huge. It even sounds bigger when you say it like that. <laughs> See, maybe this is why Trump and Sanders connected with the ordinary <laughs> folks in a way Hillary Clinton couldn't. She probably said huge. Yeah, that's all. And you know what? If you say humongous, that, that's ginormous. That's taking it to a different level. <laughs> I'll tell you what my favourite words were this week out of yeah. the mouth of my producer. We've got David Astle for the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very flattering. Even but I, with that earring remark. Oh, I beg your pardon. Stop, I didn't mean to throw shade. It was just an example. I hope you've got some humour, Lee. <laughs> David Astle, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks a lot.